Great, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. My name is John Gorski. I'm a sales engineer with a company called Scaly. I'm not sure if um, if you all know or heard of what Scaly is, or I thought I'd give you a quick background on the company. So I'm here to talk about the S3 open source server, uh, a product that we just kind of released to the open source community um, about in the month of June, a few months ago. Uh, but to kind of give you a background of what this S3 open source server is, and how we kind of got to this point. I want to give you a little bit of history and background on the company itself and, and what we do. So we're um, a software-defined object store technology that operates at, at the petabyte scale. Uh, we are completely 100% hardware agnostic. Uh, what that really means is, is that you can run on any standard x86 server. Um, there's no, uh, so you know, we have a bunch of relationships with, with companies like Cisco, Hewlett Packard, Dell, uh, but there's no restriction on what type of hardware you can run, run the operate, uh, or run the application on. We're purely an application, we run on top of Linux. Uh, we support a variety of different Linux operating systems, um, like CentOS, Ubuntu, and uh, RHEL, of course. And we run completely within user space. So that means that there's no kernel modifications. We don't interrupt how you uh, apply kernel patches or anything to that effect. Uh, we're, we're pretty agnostic in that, in that respect. Uh, the platform scales from you know a few hundred terabytes up to hundreds of petabytes in a single namespace. All all of these expansions, all of these um, um, uh, activities that we do within the server are completely non-disruptive. So there's no interruption of service. We're we're focused on 100% availability, reliability, and resiliency. Um, we have a few, you know, because we work with so many different vendors, hardware vendors, we do have reference architectures that you, you, we can, we can um, uh, work with our customers on. And typically where we get involved is we get involved with the, s the sizing of the systems. We don't, we don't really recommend specific hardware platforms, but we'll, we'll, we'll get involved with the sizing aspect of it where, you know, we would recommend how much memory you might need or how much uh, um, SSD you might need for metadata activities and stuff like that. So um, it really enables our customer to kind of continue the relationship they have with their existing hardware vendors uh, and leverage some of those relationships as they move forward. So the, um, the storage system itself is an object store. However, we do provide a wide variety of different protocols to access the object store. So these are what we refer to as connectors. The connectors are... Uh, um, translation or, or presentation layers to the application based on what the application requirements are. So essentially, we, uh, we have a wide variety and, this, uh, and the, you know, they're in three different categories. There's, of course, object connectors, which is the S3. S proxy is our um, um, standard REST interface, and then we have a CDMI interface. Uh, the soft connectors are really our scale-out file system. So those are the POSIX interfaces, so NFS, uh, Fuse and SMB. Uh, we realized early on that there is um, uh, a lot of applications that still require this, right? Not all applications are object ready, but customers want to adopt this technology within their environment. Uh, so to enable that adoption rate quicker within these environments, we made these uh, uh, POSIX interfaces available natively within the product. And then, of course, we have a series of OpenStack drivers, so Swift, Cinder, Glance, and Manila. Uh, so you can easily plug this into your OpenStack uh, environment if you're operating one today. Uh, all of these connectors are available in the product natively, the, and they can all operate uh, uniquely independently, or they can all operate at, at the same time. So we're in the sixth, gener sixth release uh, of, of generation of software, so it's a, it's a mature product. You see, as the time went on from 2010, the product has evolved over time. We continually added new features, enhancements, um, uh, new capabilities, and we've continued to develop and, and improve these capabilities as time went on. So you see stuff like erasure coding, uh, file services have been in the product for four or five years, so they're very mature and very reliable uh, and very resilient. So why S3? So um, why was it important for us to, to refresh and enhance our S3 capability? So there's, there's a, a large adoption rate going on right now. So we're seeing a series of application vendors, uh, whether it be backup, archive, or, or, or you know, uh, lots of application ISVs are making an, AP, an S3 API available for, for customer use. So it was really an easy way for us to kind of um, 
get the technology into the customer and have them use it right away. And essentially, uh, we're seeing this adoption rate uh, really ramp up in the past 18 months or so. So it's be almost become the de facto standard for object uh, um, applications. And we're seeing a growing demand. You know, so, and, and another thing that we're trying to do as well is we're trying to bridge the gap between, or, uh, between the object world and the POSIX world. So we're, we're making these protocols um, uh, available in a common namespace. So have the S3 protocol share a namespace with a POSIX interface so that you can ingest files, let's say, via NFS and access them through over S3 or in ingest them over S3 and access them over NFS. So really kind of bridging that gap between the object and file world so that you, you, know, you can have them being accessed by a variety of different applications at the same time. So you know, our new S, our, our refreshed S3 connector for version six of our software, uh, we've taken a new approach uh, with the way we deploy the software. Uh, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for our customers to deploy and configure it, it within their environment with minimal amount of uh, you know, uh, tuning and whatnot. So essentially what we did was we went to a, a Docker uh, container deployment model. So uh, all the customer has to do is download these Docker containers, install them on the connector, and essentially they now have an S3 API which is, which is available to, to them for work. So it makes the deployment a lot quicker, a lot faster, a lot, a lot more simpler for the customer, and, the, the, and they, they could be up and running uh, pretty quick. And again, of course, zero configuration uh, um, from, from the customer standpoint. So there's, uh, you know, we picked a lot of the best practices with regards to setting this thing up. So it, it'll work for the majority of the use cases, the more, majority of different file types. There's three major components that are um, incorporated into the S3 connector. Uh, so the S3 server itself, so this is the actual S3 uh, compatible API, right? So th this responds to all the HTTP requests. Um, you know, uh, standard S3 headers and response codes are all supported. Multi-part multi -part upload is all supported. You know, uh, most of the available, or most of the, the uh, popular you know, uh, requests and calls from the S3 API are all supported. Um, Multi-connector scale-out was very important to us, so we realized that um, uh, performance, the, as the performance aspect of the system is also uh, critical. So we want to enable uh, a, a true scale-out capability with this connector. So we've, we've incorporated um, an S3 metadata cache mechanism that will be distributed and synchronized across multiple connectors. So now we can have multiple connectors talking to a common bucket from a single site or a multi-site. So, so here we have a, a situation where we can now we can have the, the, the ring which, which would exist or the namespace which, which could exist in multiple data centers and you can have multiple connectors, multiple data centers accessing the ring uh, in an active active configuration. So it, it's true scale out type of performance uh, th th that was probably one of the more difficult parts of, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the development process, getting the connectors to be able to talk to each other and sharing the cache and, 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 and synchronizing the cache across all, all these different connectors. The S3 vault portion of it is really the, um, the user management and authentication aspect of the, of the S3 API itself. Where, so we support all of the, where we're 100% compatible with, with the, with the uh, typical Amazon AWS uh, um, authentication model and user, uh, user gr and group models of um, uh, policy management and group management. So essentially, you can use, if you uh, have an existing environment that's leveraging or talking to an S3 Amazon service and you wanted to essentially point your application or start moving that, 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 that data to an, more of an on-prem type of service, uh, we support all the standard AWS management tools. So you don't have to change the way you operate, you don't have to change the way you do things, you just basically take your data set, data stream and start pointing it to our environment and you can operate the function and still continue to manage that, that service in the, in, in the same way you, you do today. Uh, Another important feature that we're, gonna, that we're adding into the S3 API is an HSM uh, um, data mover policy, a, a policy engine that will essentially uh, capture data 
uh, based on bi your business policies. And uh, once we identify a, a target, we can take that, that, um, that data and we can move it out to another Amazon type of service like Glacier or whatnot for a long-term archive or, or like a, a parking lot type of deal. So if data hasn't been touched in, let's say for example, your policy says one year, you can have that data automatically move to another um, Amazon enabled service. So the, the important thing to understand about the, about the connectors, where this S3 API lives, is the fact that these connectors, this connector technology is really decoupled from the storage system itself. So we have the object store technology which sits um, at, at the infrastructure layer. Our, ob our object store or our software will es essentially take all these distributed servers, tie them together into a large global namespace, provide all the data protection mechanisms, the scalability, resiliency, uh, and, and all of the other features that are important to your, your, your environment. And then we essentially layer the connector or the, 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 the protocol layer on, uh, or presentation layer on top of that. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility how you deploy a system and what type of applications you can address uh, from, from, you know, from, from the time you get it to the time you, 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 know, you, keep, you keep moving forward. If, you don't, if you're not using S3 today but you want to use it tomorrow, you can spin one up pretty quickly. So uh, the S3 um, connector will sit on top of the object store. You can um, address all of these different application needs. They can be in, in uh, again, different data centers. You can have the namespace that would across data center boundaries. Uh, we can provide data center resiliency, so we can create what we refer to as failure domains, and the failure domain can either um, span across a, a, a series of servers, a rack of servers, or a complete data center, so you can sustain a data center outage, continue to operate throughout those outages. And, uh, the, uh, and again, the S3 connector is deployed in, uh, above that storage layer, those can be either S3 connectors, they can be a NFS connectors, uh, so it really doesn't matter what type of connectors, they all support the same type of deployment model, plus the, um, the scale out capability. So we've incorporated that metadata uh, synchronizing of the cache uh, in all our connector technology, so now you can have a true scale out performance model where we're scaling the system in, in two dimensions, not only in a, uh, a capacity aspect, we're also scal scaling out in the performance aspect as well. Uh, so the, now we get to the open source S3 server. So why do we do this? Or, or why was it important for us to do this? Um, so not everybody has two petabytes worth of data. Right? So um, people want to learn to use this technology, adopt this technology, uh, test, test an S3 API. They, may, they might have a test dev environment or they may have something similar to that. They may have a smaller requirement. They're, Resiliency requirements might not be as stringent as or, or as, as as critical. So, uh, going to a full scale out, full resiliency type of ring was not uh, or may not be a critical part of it. So, we we've, we've made we made the uh, S3 server available uh, again as a Docker container, which is downloadable. It's a single single instance running in a Docker container. And it essentially runs on a single server. Same S3 interface same S3 API that we're using on the large uh, scale out system, uh, but it doesn't have, of course, the, um, uh, the same level of resiliency and scale out features. So more of a kind of a, um, a local uh, um, operating type of environment. <coughs> so again, you know, S3 has become kind of the de facto standard. Uh, so we created the S3 server really to, to enable uh, a development test application that can be deployed later at web scale. So you want to start testing your devs today, your applications today, and then take that same application and deploy it at larger web scale. You can just easily move that to, to, to the new environment. So it gives you a way to kind of test the compatibility of your application with the S3 API. <coughs> it can be de deployed very quickly. You know, um, under five minutes, you basically just download the container. Uh, the Docker container. You can install it on your laptop. So developers find this very useful if they're traveling a lot or they're sitting on a plane or they're sitting somewhere and they want to you know, write some code or whatnot. They want to test it against an S3 API. You can just download this directly on your laptop, run a little environment, and there you have in a little S3 server sitting on your laptop. Makes it very convenient, very easy for you to you know, uh, code on the run, I guess, if you want, uh, type of thing. <laughs> um, or 
if you want to have a test dev environment, you can just put up a little server, um, a single server that your, your development team can all have access to and essentially just you know, write your code and test, test of that. Or if you really want to use it in production, there, there's nothing stopping you from using it in production. You can get a, a server that has you know, some level of raw capacity. You know, there's servers out there that have four or 500 terabytes of raw capacity in a single server. You can you know, throw that thing in a rack and essentially install the S3 uh, server on, onto that device. And now you have an S3 uh, enabled backup uh, in, uh, you know, solution within your environment in a matter of minutes. So the, you know the only in, in that scenario, the data protection mechanisms would come from you know the server hardware level type of uh, protection mechanism. So we're not doing it at the software. So that self-healing capability that we that we provide in the large scale out would not be available here. You'd have to depend on the RAID groups and 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 those type of uh, data protection mechanisms that you would have uh, in the server itself. So how do you install it? It's pretty simple. You know, so uh, since June, so we're, we're seeing a real interest in this open source server right now. There, since June, we've had 4,300 downloads. So we're seeing a lot of people kind of going to the website. Uh, there's a lot of interest in, 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 in adopting this. So they're saying, well, let me try and get um, you know, access to it and whatnot. So they're essentially downloading it via, you know, in, in, in a Docker container, um, putting it on their environment. And then using simple tools like Cyberduck, uh, S3 command, or something similar to that just to, to run their tests. It operates exactly like it would with a normal S3 environment. So, um, and that's kind of uh, how they're doing it. So if anybody is, is looking to, you could use, if, you, if, if you're on Docker or whatnot, you could just do a search for Scality uh, S3, open or server, and then you'll find it there. You can download it and install it within a matter of minutes. And that's it. Messages, download, scale the S3 server, and try it out. Again, thank you for your time.